Lastly, on the shoulder, we're going to look at the acromioclavicular joint. Now, most patients who have acromioclavicular joint pain are going to come in and point to this region. And remember, you will get lots of changes on AC joints, even, even in quite young people, and it may not be anything to do with their symptoms. So to find the AC joint, you just have the patient in a neutral position. Now, people struggle to find the AC joint because they think it's, too an it's more anterior. So actually, just remember, it's quite posterior um, or posterior people seem to find it better posteriorly. Now, if we look at this bone here, so the lateral side here is the acromion, the medial side is the clavicle, this is the AC joint here. Now you can see that really nice superior capsule going over the top of the AC joint. And you can see in this case, there's very little cortical regularity, which you often will get. Always look carefully at the um, uh, clavicular side to look for any uh, destruction of the joint, which can be uh, osteolysis. You do also sometimes get a little meniscoid um, or a little synovial recess that goes into the joint. You need to bear that in mind if you're doing injections. Um, in terms of assessing the AC joint, look for the thickening uh, of the capsule, look for any joint or fluid in the joint, and also look at the cortical reg for any cortical regularity on the bone. And make sure you scan through the joint. It's actually a bigger joint than you think. So make sure you scan posteriorly. So you have a look at the posterior aspect of the joint, which we can see nicely there, and then scanning through, scanning through, scanning through until you get to that anterior aspect. So you can see, and not a lot of people do that. They often just poke it on, plonk it on here and have a look, but let's actually have a good look because what I find is that people are quite tender at the back of the AC joint and sometimes you miss that just by poking it on the top. So AC joint, make sure that you scan through, look at the change of angle of the wire and the probe to look at the AC joint um, thoroughly. The other thing you can do is look for any laxity in the joint. So there's two types of things, uh, laxity to look out for. One is um, horizontal, which is where you have widening of the joint between the clavicle um, and the acromion. So you can measure that, but also uh, vertical laxity, which is often the clavicle end will go up and down during movements. So there's too much laxity in the joint and that can be a problem. You can assess it dynamically. If a patient comes in and says they get pain with a three kilogram uh, flexion, then pop a, uh, a weight in the hand and assess it under load. We're going to do it with no load here. So if we just ask our model slowly to come into flexion, and then what you can see, you can see what happens to the clavicle distance from the um, acromion. Uh, but also you can see if there's any pain uh, and then come back down. So you want everything to stay pretty level, um, both horizontally and vertically. If you bring your arm slowly out to the side. Good. If you struggle, you can use two hands. You can see that there's not a lot of movement there, which is a good sign. And then if we go into the provocation test, i.e. a scarf test, then what you will see is you'll start to see some bunching as these bones approximate, as you can see there, and you'll be able to see any fluid coming out if there's a problem. So there's just a couple of tips for your acromioclavicular joint.